everybody, and welcome to the Top Cut. We have seen so many Swiss rounds today, but now we've been whittled down to the best of the best, mm -hmm. and they are going to be facing off with each other right now. Yes, and the best of the best that we've had here today is Diego currently 5-0, and the first seed going up against Rowan Hall. We saw a couple of close calls in his matches today, and uh, he also made it into the top cut just as narrowly as some of those games uh, he ended up playing today. But a couple of things to note about these competitors is their teams for sure. We saw Rowan already, so we know what he's using, but Diego is a little bit more unconventional. Why don't you uh, break it down for us here, Matthias? Yes, yeah, so I'm going to go from... Least interesting to most interesting, mm -hmm. or Elysian. We have the Raging Bolt, very strong right. staple. You know, you got that little uh, thunderclap coverage there. You have the Golden Go. We saw that one before as well, and that one was a very strong pick. But all of these we have not seen yet today. I have to come following here. Or yesterday. Or yesterday. We have the Chen Pao with the... Uh, very strong ice type attacker being able to take things down very very quickly lowering the defense also very strong move mm -hmm. we have the tinglu with <laughs> with not the usual fissure stomping tantrum we've seen in the past going for a little bit more of a support kind of play style almost and then we have the dondazo which is interesting terra bug and that one actually is going to be running Fissure. Oh, oh, it is. Yeah, that one has Fissure, which is an interesting pick. A very good pick. Yawn as well. That's going to be a pretty big threat, too. Yawn is a sleep move that it's basically as effective as Spore. It's just the sleep comes one turn later, which, if you know what you're doing... And it works on grass types, unlike Spore. Exactly. So, if anything, it, it might be better than Spore <laughs> in a lot of ways. But, again, it's that's if you know what you're doing with it. And, again, Diego being uh, currently 5-0, I would assume he does. But, of course, he's going to... We forgot to cover the restricted. Uh, yes. The Zamazenta is on the loose. Zamazenta making its debut here. If you aren't aware and if you know anything about Pokemon, you might be very surprised to see Zamazenta is actually more favored than Zacian right now in this format. Wow. So... We're going to see the Dauntless Shield probably for the first time anyone's ever seen that ability proc in competitive Pokemon <laughs> using it in this format. It's going to boost his defense immediately upon switching in. And Iron Hands might even be coming out already for Rowan. He might want to use something a little bit more, a little less risky to have out on the field, but still as representing as big of, of a threat as usual. Exactly, and now you can tell that this is going to be interesting. Rowan Holly's going for the Quiver Dance setup. Wants to get the swap out as soon as he can, because Diego has a very good setup going on right now. Has the Chien Pao to lower the defense, gets everything, and this Zamazenta already boosting its defense is going to get stronger and stronger as time goes on. It has a wide slam, it has water has wide guard has heavy slam and it has that body press to utilize that extra defense boost so this iron hands is going to be pretty relevant here that uh, ice spinner is going to actually get rid of the electric terrain uh so that also means that's going to be an attack drop too iron wow hands. look how strong that body press is really just showing the power that physical attacks can represent when used properly here. We've been seeing a lot of special attackers so far, but Diego's team, very physical centric. I don't, I mean, besides Raging Bolt, he doesn't really have any special attacks on his team. And I guess Golden Go? Everything else is either, well, Fissure or, um, yeah, physical attacks. Yeah, he has a very good setup right now. Electric Tain back up. Nice switch out, though. Trying to get the double quiver dance on that Volcarona. It's going to be a second main hyper carry right there. If he can manage to do that, he'll be in an amazing spot. But things are looking a little bit dicey. Diego still getting one town is going to be massive. And the Zamazenta is just doing so much damage. Now we're going to see the first act of this turn. It's going to be a Terrastalization going on to the Maridon to get some more value out of that electric attack. I believe it still will be the fastest Pokemon on the field here, so... Well, maybe wow. if uh, the Volcarona did that Quiver Dance last turn. Well, it definitely is now, so it's not going to be the fastest the Maridon, but it will be the second fastest, maybe unless the Qian Pao acts first. We'll see who's faster here. Chen Pao actually will outspeed the Maridon. That's going to be a huge ice spinner. Uh, got rid of the dragon typing. Otherwise, it probably would have gone down since it would be um, weak to it. Actually, it wouldn't be weak. Volt Switch is going to come out onto the Chen Pao. It's going to take Wow, the Focus down. Sash. Yeah, Focus Sash coming to use there. That's why you run it, of course. 
It's gonna hang on, get one more turn of usage out of this Chen Pao to wreak some havoc. You're gonna see the switch in of the Frigoraph. No other choice but this one. It's not even gonna get to use the uh, Electric Seed because this Chen Pao is just tearing up the terrain. And the Body Press coming out onto that normal typing, it's gonna be neutral thanks to the uh, Psychic typing as well, but still gonna get taken down to almost nothing. Yeah, this flamethrower from this Volcarona is now going to be a massive threat for Zamazenta and Qian Pao. Because that is a special attacking move that's going to go through all these staunch defenses. Still, mm -hmm. that's some good special defense to make up for it. But with the Protect coming through that flamethrower, thrower, not going to be getting any value this turn. Yeah, so no Protect is going to come out. Oh, it went on the Qian Pao instead. Very interesting. Zamazenta is going to be able to knock out Farigaraf. And we're gonna see Zamazenta still out on the field wreaking havoc. Uh, Chen Pao still gonna be a huge threat as well. Uh, just away from uh, Volcarona, it is the fastest Pokemon on the field. Maridon close in third, and Zamazenta going last. But that's the thing with Zamazenta, it is such a bulky Pokemon. You really aren't able to one-shot it with most standard things, especially in unboosted, and if it's not special, super effective, it's definitely not gonna go down. So yeah, you have your boosted Volcarona, but it's gonna be hitting into a one HP um, Chen Pao, which is gonna wow. sucker punch your Maridon before you even get to do anything. And realistically, that was his only choice because he is using choice specs. It's not like you can protect. Your Maridon's going down. I'm starting to see the weaknesses in this idea of all inning on one or two very strong Pokemon because even something as simple as Chen Pao with sucker punch can just really make their day worse. Yeah, but utilizing Zamazenta with this sorts of that uh, sort of ruin ability with Chen. Pao is just absolutely brutal for the yeah. enemy team. This Zamazenta has one shot or nearly one shot every single person on the enemy team there. And he still has more Pokemon to make up for. He has the Dondazo, which is self sufficient. He has the Tinglu, his Raging Wolf, Golden Go, all very strong Pokemon in case the matchup just isn't going his way. I even realized, yes, this Pokemon has Wide Guard itself. So even when you are going to the Chen Pao, it's still going to be able to withstand it. The Donzo coming out and huge tank itself. Reminder that this Volcarona is resisting these body presses and they're still doing so much. The Donzo with the cleanup, super effective at that. And I believe Wave Crash also boosted speed that's gonna be game one going to Diego yeah this is going to be Diego getting the first round and you can definitely tell why this guy is currently five and oh he's having an amazing run with this Zama Zenta using the body press just using that giant massive defense stat and the little defense boost that you get at the start is just absolutely amazing planning and the execution of the plan is impeccable as well he's having that chen pao out to lower your opponent's defense mm -hmm. wait does it lower the defense of the zamazenta is everything on the field yeah, no but zamazenta is getting into boost so You're it's right. basically unaffected by that so wow. chen pao is just reducing the defense of both opposing pokemon zamazenta is not going to be actually but that's the thing it's not lowering it so it's still going to get the benefit from Body press. It's still gonna be right. doing the more damage. Is, yeah. Yeah. So it's not lowering the stat. It's just lowering it. Yeah. It's hard to explain. <laughs> it's not like you use nasty plot, you boost your stat or anything like that. Or tail whip is the only one I can think of to reduce a Pokemon's defense. The defense is just lower. Yeah. <laughs> just makes it makes it feel flatter and operate at that way. Mm -hmm. But still amazing planning all around. Zamazenta, I don't think we've seen anybody else today on stream at least use Zamazenta mm -hmm. and I don't think it's a very high pick rate in general, but it's seeing a lot of use now, which is is amazing to see. I know Zacian is not in a as great spot, mm -hmm. but I'm just happy that Diego's using something off meta not using that that ice rider that we've been seeing so much and still getting i'd say even more value out of it almost and this is the kind of pokemon i really like to see um when the format kind of gets figured out you start to see a lot of those similar situations where you have everybody kind of running the same guy and that guy's guy's ability is just do the thing <laughs> that that guy does and then you run another guy next to him to make sure that guy doesn't get knocked out but 
with the lineup that Diego's running, everybody feels like their own function. They all kind of have something that they do. They're self-sufficient. They work really well together, even though they're self-sufficient. But when you bring them, it's, it feels more like a team. When it's, you know, like the Calyrex with the, the three, um, you know, redirections, it's not, it doesn't feel like a team. It's more just like a me. Yeah, it's a hyper carry, right? This yeah. one definitely operates as a team. Everyone's still self-sufficient, but everybody has their role. Everybody has their place. Going with the same lead up once again. And it's actually going to be the same lead up on both sides once again. So I'm interested to see what Rowan here has thought up at a different approach to try and flip the script here. Yeah, so Chen Pao could be facing the uh, fake out, but with Protect, could also bait that out as well. Zamazenta, not something you really want to fake out. I'm not sure if you do. It doesn't feel great. You're not really getting much value. It doesn't really threaten any one-shot potential. But it's turn one. You got to fake out something. And I think it makes sense to go for that Chien Pao. Whether or not we're going to see the read coming out from Diego, we'll have to see. But there's also that Volcarona on the field. Actually, it's going to switch in. Reading the fake out, and it's going to switch in instead to the Ting Lu. We're seeing the debut of this Pokemon here as well. Yeah, very good matchup into both of these. It's ground, dark, resists the electricity, oh. resists the fire. Very good switch in. It's going to flinch the Zamazenta actually faked out that, and we're going to get the Quiver Dance coming out as well. But here's the thing, Ting Lu, very similar to Chen Pao, but instead of reducing defense, it's reducing special attacks. So realistically, right now, all this thing is getting is increased special defense, which isn't going to matter against two physical attackers, and it's getting above the speed, which I'm pretty sure is probably already the fastest Pokemon on the field. Exactly. We're at an, it's another situation where basically Nothing happened for turn one. <laughs> exactly. But a great read by Die Diego. Great pivot into an even more advantageous scenario. He knows they're probably going to focus in on the Zamazenta going for the protect. Amazing play. And now, I wonder what this Tinglu has done for a move. He has a lot of options. All kinds of things, but I'm excited oh. to see. Green punch. Oh, that died a lot. Because mm -hmm. that's going to hurt quite a bit. Rocky Helmet doing a little bit of shit damage. There's the Sand Tomb. Getting that damage over time on Iron Hands. More importantly, preventing the switch in as well. It's what Sand Tomb does prevent the switch, right? It's kind of like the uh, Fire Tornado, Fire Vortex. I'm pretty sure it prevents switching. Um, but in any case, oh, but maybe you can still switch with Volt Switch. Uh, I think that might be the case. In any case, it's just going to be solid ground type damage against this uh, electric type uh, of Iron Hands. But this Tang Lu, yeah, all kinds of things it could run. It also has taunt. You might even, I mean, you don't want to taunt the uh, Volcarona yet because it's still very powerful. Honestly, you kind of prefer it to keep Quiver Dancing because that means it's not hitting your Pokemon. But Body Press is going to knock out the Iron Hands wow, crit, crit as well. Um, I'm not sure if that one, actually, I think it does because I keep think, forgetting. I don't think Iron Hands is a Steel type. I think it's Electric Fighting. No, I think you're right. It is Electric Fighting. It looks like it should be. But now getting the Sand Tomb on that Volcarona as well is going to be absolutely imperative. Sure, it's still out here. It has the boosts from Qu Quiver Dance. Not doing all too much for it as of right now. As the Zamazenta is just be way too strong on the field currently. And Rowan doesn't have many good options. He's switching to the Maraidon. This Ting Lu, big threat on the field as well. He has a lot of strong choices to make. Now, we have the Maraidon coming in here, committing the uh, Draco Meteor onto the Ting Lu, which is gonna protect it. You, it's, it's again, the Pokemon on this field, on the side of the, uh, Diego's field rather, are just too tanky to really be scared of anything, Draco Meteor forced to go onto the Tinglu as well because Zamazenta is immune to it. Actually, no, it's not a fairy type. That's Zacian's fairy type, my mistake. But I think um, they're both fairy type. One's fairy steel and one is fairy fighting. I think uh, Zamazenta is oh, right. fighting. It's fighting steel. steel. I think you're right. Correct. Again, this been a long time since Sword and no Shield. One, <laughs> even when it was Sword and Shield, nobody was playing this Pokemon, so <laughs> it's really hard to say for sure. But when we're going to be looking now at what the, both of these competitors are going to be trying to set themselves up for in the next few turns, I think right now you have your Quiver Dance full Corona, but it's not, again, the defensive element of Quiver Dance is not really a factor in this game. You're just getting the potency with those, uh, those attacks, but you can't find those opportunities to get those attacks off in the first place. 
So it's a little scary to try to go for anything because everything feels really committal with Rowan. Even something as simple as a flamethrower feels like you're taking a huge gamble because there's two Pokemon that resist a lot of stuff you're doing, or even if they don't resist it, just won't go down to what you're doing, and you're vulnerable regardless. So it's very scary to try to commit too much to anything. Zamazenta is going to protect this turn. Ting Lu did the last. And Flamethrower is going to go onto the Ting Lu this time. He gets the correct read. And even though he's boosted, he's not going to go down here. Sand Tomb is going to go onto the Whimsicott, forcing it to stay in. But I don't think this Whimsicott has any intentions of switching out anytime soon anyways. At the very least, the Focus Sash won't come into play. So it can go down next turn if Diego um, does try to take it down. But I think this Volcarona might be a little bit more of a pertinent threat. This Ting Lu is running Taunt, so he can basically completely nullify any use that this Whimsicott has, as well as forcing it to stay in. Yeah, it's a very good matchup right now. I'd say Diego, though, has so many good options. He's going to try and switch out, though. Doesn't like the throw of the Volcarona now. And has like can finally dial in and focus on it. Gonna go for the Dondazo, try and eat that flamethrower. And uh, yeah, Ting Lu getting it to protect again. They're basically just taking turns protecting, um, but the Zonzo coming in is going to absorb that flamethrower and the Moonblast oh, as crit. well. Crit, but still not going to be felt too much by the Zonzo. It's such a huge Pokemon, huge HP, huge defenses as well. And yes, Zamazenta is fighting Steel. Not very, but again, who really knows? This Pokemon is basically becoming relevant for the first time ever. Uh, and I'm a huge fan for that because I love Zamazenta, at least a lot more than Zacian. And Samsung is going to keep the Swimsicott in. Uh, I don't think we see, yeah, we did not see the taunt come out. I think that might be why Rowan's mostly just pressing this um, Moon Blast here, kind of reading the fact that he might go for that taunt and he doesn't want to waste any turns here. He just wants to get as much damage spread as possible because, again, every turn matters when you're playing against uh, these Pokemon that are so tanky, so bulky. The only exception being Chen Pao, which is holding Focus Sash. So you have to try to get anything done, um, and every point of damage is relevant. So I wouldn't be surprised if he just goes for the Moon Blast consistently and then Volcarona just tries to find some kind of value. In fact, it's going to protect against that uh, Dodonzo, so it won't go down to any water type. But the Diego get the read here. The Moon Blast is coming out. Going to take down the Tinglu. What is this Dodonzo going to do here? Did they focus the Whip Scott? Did they do a single target? Wave Crash onto the Volcarona. Beautiful read by Rowan Hall. Absolutely. The only other thing that really would have made sense here would have maybe been to yawn the uh, Whimsicott, but, and you definitely want to wave crash into it because it's, you know, grass type of resistance, so, I mean, You could have figured, fissured, but that's that's a big risk you're taking there. Right. <laughs> I think it might have just been a little bit Great play from Diego. He did the most consistent thing he could have done. Now, with no protect, this Volcarona can be very vulnerable going in to this next engagement. And neither of them will be able to take down the Chen Pao because first of all, it's faster than both of them. Second of all, it's holding onto a Focus Sash. So this Gen Pal is going to be able to wreak havoc here and probably take down at least one of these Pokemon before they're going to have a chance to really get anything done. So someone's going to fall here. Who's that one going to be? And who are you trying to protect? A Moon Blast could be the play, but going to go for the Tailwind because Ting Lu is down, so it can't get taunted. It's just going to get that Tailwind up and hope that the rest of this team can try to clean up as best as possible. And you're going to switch in the Vol switch out the Volcarona, despite it being so boosted, and bring out your Maridon to try to maybe see if you can get an electric type move onto the Dodonzo, maybe predicting that, maybe, yeah, the Chan Pao could have predict, uh, predicted with a Protect, and then, uh, you know, the Dodonzo could have gone for a move, but with your switching to the Maridon, you're threatening this, this Dodonzo now, and you can force the switch back to the to Turret Ghost on this Chen Pao, trying to keep it alive against any of the moves that might come towards it. Using Ice Spinner, which one is this going to land on? Yeah, the Whimsicott is going to be taken down there. And now the last two remaining are going to be this Volcarona and this Maridon. Electric Train going down. If he didn't switch out that turn, he could have brought it back up. Next turn, the Wave Crash lands, takes down the Maridon. A critical hit to Pooh. That's got to sting on the way out. But that is going to be it. 
And Diego has won this set in a 2-0 fashion. That is the reason why he is 5-0 and now 6-0. An amazing game all the round. Rowan Hall played it very, very well mm -hmm. that second game, dialed in. Really brought this one all the way. But Diego just had it dialed in as well. He was prepared to just take that team down. And that's the thing, when you play with a standard team, sure, you'll do pretty well against other standard teams. When someone's just bringing something that works and it's outside of that standard, then you run into some issues. We know how powerful Maridon is. We know how powerful all these Pokemon on the side of Rowan are, but against these bulky Pokemon that threaten all of the common threats that you see coming up from these standard teams, they have the benefit of having data on you and knowing what you're going to do and how to play around you, but you don't really have any answers to them. Exactly, and that was just a really exhilarating game to see. For you could sure. definitely tell that the Zamazenta team had a very simple game plan, but it mm -hmm. also took so many moving pieces to make it work. You know, you had multiple different modes you can go on. You could suppress your opponent with the Tinglu. You could weaken them with the Chien Pao. The Don Dozo, very strong, had those with that water coverage. Just check. so many different options to use. You just have great check -ins, uh, checks for so many different things. Switch-ins as well. You have ground coverage. You have water you can switch into. You have, of course, steel. Obviously, very notorious for being a good defensive type. You have fighting of course, which is honestly, defensively, pretty decent um, given the moves that you're seeing right now. And, of course, that's going to give you stab on your uh, body press, which you're going to get boosted on for your defense. So you're able to withstand so much. All of these Pokemon are so comfortable coming in, taking any hits that they need to take, and then just dishing it back out tenfold. Yeah, it was a brilliant play by Diego. Congrats to both of them for making him top cut, and congrats to Diego for advancing even further onwards. But with all that being said, we're going to throw it to a very quick break, and we'll be right back with more Pokemon action. 